Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm one of the consultants in reproductive medicine at the Homerton Fertility Center. And this is Andreas, who is an expert in endometriosis and IVF and works in Cyprus. And Sachin Kulkarni, as we know, is a consultant in IVF and a researcher in polycystic ovarian disease. Uh, today's discussion is slightly different. It is a very complex and a very painful condition which women go through and that is rectovaginal endometriosis and often you see women who come in with rectovaginal endometriosis with pain and also with infertility and this is which is sometimes long-standing uh, as a surgeon who has <coughs> those extensive skills of doing stage 4 endometriosis and rectovaginal disease and also having a background of fertility, uh, how would you view these cases and what options or what advice would you give this uh, lady who is in, in so much rectal pain and yet wants a baby? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a fascinating topic and I think for me at least it's uh, probably the most difficult topic in, in gynecology to talk about severe endometriosis and fertility um, and especially in a woman who has got pain. Now clearly fertility is on one hand and pain is on the other hand and I always ask the question, what is the priority? Choose one of the two, what do you want me to take away first, the pain or help you with the baby? So let's put the scenario, I want a baby because we're discussing fertility uh, here, then you have to take into consideration that this woman who is in pain ends up going to A&E every month to get injection for the pain. You want to get her pregnant, which is a time in life where pain most of the times won't be there because she's pregnant and the endometriosis sleeps. However, this woman is going to have a baby afterwards and she needs to raise the baby and the pain comes back again and she needs to go to A&E. So, you need to balance on these things and say sometimes, yes, I need to treat the endometriosis to get you rent a pain free and then proceed with IVF. On the other hand, if the pain is well controlled, it's better if you go to fertility direction first and then discuss about surgery in the future. Um, the other important thing is we know there's huge amount of evidence and especially contradicting evidence whether treat this endometriosis, will you get fertility yeah. better or not get fertility better. Rectum vaginal endometriosis, many times you find endometriosis on the ovary, even if there is no cyst, you have superficial endometriosis that you end up touching on the ovary and distracting ovarian tissue. So it's a huge amount of information that you have to collect and counsel the couple and decide what's the best thing to do. And I conclude at this question by saying that ideally we want to stay away from surgery as much as possible and try to get embryos. However, maybe it's not a bad idea prior to putting embryos back in a woman who has rectovaginal disease and pain, consider surgery. What do you think about such an as a person who is yeah, so much into IVF? Uh, let me say, uh, I do see a lot of naive uh, patients of infertility who come to me and one of the things which are missing in our diagnosis uh, in our part world is not doing a good PV examination and a simple PV examination would pick up that nodularity and that shorty nodule on the uterosacral ligament and the fixity of the uterus which makes you think of doing an early laparoscopy for these patients so that you can make a diagnosis of uh, endometriosis much early, treat them comfortably so that we don't land up into a very perplexing situation of having a severe rectovaginal endometriosis, that's one. Secondly, I would, being into IVF, uh, if there is no occlusive symptom of rectovaginal endometriosis or urectric occlusion or of any of these occlusive symptoms, I would go a bit by medical therapy. And if I would give it a shot, if a medical therapy by giving, let's say something like Dynogest or Ocipils for three to four months, can it decrease the pain? And the studies are saying that these drugs are pretty safe, especially Dynogest is pretty safe. Uh, the VIPOS study, we should have the reports of the VIPOS study published soon of usage of 52 weeks of continuous Dynogest therapy. And uh, there has been one trial published about doing a colorectal surgery versus giving a prolonged uh, 
medical therapy and they have said that the medical therapy the satisfaction rate of the patient is 78 percent with the medical therapy and with 65 percent with the colorectal surgery and colorectal surgery as we understand is definitely more morbid and more a surgery done by very few specialist people which is that so i i wouldn't mind going ahead with a small course of medical therapy to relieve her pain and then take her up for an ivf uh, or whatever fertility regimen is needed as per the other parts of the uh, infertility factors. But I firmly agree that we need a thorough evaluation because very uncommonly that we will see a solitary deep endometriosis, isn't it? It would be commonly associated with the low risk peritoneal endometriosis or small endometrioma here and there. And we need to approach that holistically. So uh, some amount of surgery would may be needed in this patient. So it is a bit of confusion. So we will, I, I go by his notion, how bad is the pain and how, how early we need to address that pain and that would be an important thing. And let me emphasize only one thing about the surgery is that we don't want the patient to have one surgery to do a little bit and then stop and then need to go back again because every other operation is, is, is a lot more complicated. So it's a very important decision to make if you're going to go for surgery, when you're going to do it, how you're going to do it, who is going to do it. Because, yes, you don't want this woman who came to you with pain and wants the baby to end up with a colostomy back. Yeah, so actually, I, I just wanted to know that. The uh, uh, moment we utter colostomy, forget the patients, the gynecologists yeah. are scared. So in your practice of doing this such extensive surgeries, how commonly have you seen a lady going on to a temporary colostomy? Well, that's what worries all the gynecologists when they keep advising major surgeries for these patients. It varies because when I was uh, trained in England and uh, the, the, the incidence of giving uh, temporary aleostomies was much higher. Moving away from England and see what other people do around the world then becomes less and less. And actually for the past four years, we have done quite a lot of work in Cyprus with rectal vagina disease. We've never done one yet. I know there is a place for it, but it's also down to your colorectal surgeon. It's not just down to the endometrial surgeon because he's the one at the end of the day who takes full responsibility as to whether it was the right thing to do or not the right thing to do. So but there's, it's a, not there's a possibility you may leave on a disc of disease with the colon, yeah. may handle it medically and go ahead. If the pain is relieved, they would. In about uh, 1992, I had, uh, uh, and in 1995, I had gone, uh, in fact, 1998, I think, I had gone to. Uh, uh, Ulm uh, under Kexton, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, where uh, this was the first time where I saw that uh, you could take a disc of rectovaginal disease yeah. away and do stapling, yeah. uh, and that was uh, made me realize that Europe was in fact far ahead of the rest of the world in tackling rectovaginal disease by doing a complete endoscopic surgery. Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, ca can we come to a reasonable consensus that in patients of deep uh, infiltrating endometriosis, one, uh, we need a holistic approach to know the other associated endometriosis things. The surgery needs to be done by the experts, if at all. And, uh, well, you can give some amount of medical therapy to curtail the symptoms down. And I need to only want one last thing is that in those women who you don't undertake surgery and you end up doing two, three, four air collections, sticking a needle in that area, it will make A, it will put the patient at risk A if you end up, enter the bowel. But secondly, most importantly, all this puncturing in the area of endometriosis will make a future surgery a nightmare. Okay. So you have to be careful as to how many attempts you're going to do prior to surgery, if that's the decision to, to be taken. Okay. So that's a, a, a discussion on rectovaginal disease and infertility. I, yeah, and in the course uh, conducting, we will we will go through all the recent evidence published on the deep infiltrating endometriosis, yes. and we'll discuss much further beyond all these evidences. <laughs>